With March Madness starting tomorrow, I wanted to take a look back at quite possibly one of the most accomplished college basketball players of all time. And yes, we're talking about Tyler Hansbro. And he just didn't pop out on the scene out of nowhere in college. In his high school career, he led his team to back-to-back -back state championships and scored over 2,500 career points. We'll get into more of his scoring in depth later in the video, but it's insane to me that all of his points came within the three-point line. He was named McDonald's All-American after averaging 28 points and 7.3 rebounds as a senior. And now we have to get to where he got his fame. He was heavily recruited, but he decided to take his talents to the North Carolina Tar Heels. He would take the college scene by storm, become the first player in ACC history to be first team All-American as a freshman. He won ACC Player of the Year and led his team in scoring and rebounding. And it was so strange to watch. If you remember him in college, he didn't do anything fancy. Nothing that made you jump off your seat. He just found a way to get the ball in the basket. He was ultra aggressive and super Super dedicated to making those small plays to help his team win. In his sophomore year, he was first team All ACC, first team All American for the second year in a row. He averaged 18 and a half points and once again led his team in rebounds. This takes us to his junior season where he, you guessed it, All American and All ACC first team. This was arguably his best season. He started filling up the record books. He won National Player of the Year and the fourth ACC player in history to win this award. He was ACC Player of of the year, National Play of the Year, ACC Tournament MVP, NCAA Regional MVP honors all in one season. He was voted ACC Male Athlete of the Year, only the third Tar Heel to win this award in the previous 24 seasons. He was second in scoring in the nation, only behind a young Steph Curry and Davidson. He broke the North Carolina rebounding record with 399 in one season. And going into his senior year, he capped off this legendary basketball career by having yet another fantastic season and more records but most importantly he led his team to win the national championship and I'm sure all the awards and records he'd have in the past wouldn't nearly have met nearly as much if he didn't capture at least one ring with his time with the Tar Heels. He ended up being the first player in ACC history to be first team all ACC and first team all American four years in a row. Accumulating over 2,800 points and 1,200 rebounds, he was a legend. And this is what made the North Carolina Tar Heels retire his jersey in 2010. Well, this takes us to the 2009 NBA draft where there was a lot of hype, but also a lot of question marks surrounding Tyler. He was without a doubt the most accomplished college basketball player, but there were some serious questions in his game would translate to the NBA or not. He was an undersized big at 6'9", and although athletic, he just looked very stiff and not very fluid. He had a pretty Pretty bad temper issue too, who nicknamed him Psycho T. This didn't stop him from being a lottery pick, however. The Indiana Pacers selected him 13th overall. He would only go on to play 29 games in his rookie season due to some injuries and apparently he was struggling with vertigo. I'm not sure how well this was known going into the draft, but this can be fairly serious. His second year with the Pacers was pretty good, but also kind of mediocre compared to Tyler's standards that he set for himself in college. He averaged 11 points a game, grabbed five boards, playing around 21 minutes a night. He was very efficient, but unfortunately after this year, he would only regress as a player after this. Tyler played two more years with the Pacers, but after he started scoring seven points a game, he was just an undersized big that couldn't shoot the three. At the age of 27, they decided to release him. He was picked up by Toronto for two years, and then he played one final year with the Hornets, but he never averaged five points a game in any of those seasons, and by the age of 30, his NBA career was fizzling out. This was his last year in the league, and he would play one season for the Fort Wayne Mad Ants in the G League. Shout out to my 2K players. And this story sounds like it's getting really sad, but Tyler realized that his NBA career was probably done and making it back to the league was very unlikely. So he decided that he was going to take his talents to China and play for their league. And as recently as the 2019-2020 season, the 34-year-old Tyler Hansbro averaged 32 points, 13 rebounds from 55% from the field. My mans was really LeBron James over there in China. He didn't play this year due to COVID-19, but he did start commenting for the ACC network, so I'm not sure if this is just him waiting for China to get their league up and running again or if he's retired from the sport from good.
good. All that being said, all the bad stuff was definitely sandwiched in between things of legend. He will never be forgotten in Tar Heel Nation. I'm sure he left his footprint in China's league as well. And it's a shame that he didn't do well in the NBA, but his play style and body type was just not on par for the direction the league was heading. But that's the story of where he is now. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoy March Madness. There's going to be so much good basketball on here to watch, but we had to look back at one of the most legendary basketball players of all time. Make sure if you like the video, make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe turn on your post notifications so you don't miss another video like this we post every day and i will see you guys all tomorrow peace